is the 911 Talk Podcast, episode 85, for Monday, May 21st, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Paddock Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. It never ceases to amaze me that, no matter where I go or who I talk to, there is still a fair amount of confusion on how E911 works. But it is encouraging to see that more and more people that have attended a session on E911 continue to educate themselves. E911 really is not that difficult to understand once it's laid out in front of you and you can see how it works. PBX administrators that can get to that level are then able to step back and look at their environment and make a determination on what needs to be done. This past week I had an opportunity to present to a group of individuals in Traverse City, Michigan one of the most beautiful places on earth. The event was set up by Lori Lugers with Telecom Solutions Incorporated, who aids municipalities and educational institutions with E-rate grants. The session was attended by users from the Traverse City area, as well as people from downstate, and we were fortunate enough to be hosted by the Grand Traverse County 911 Central Dispatch. The session was kicked off by Jason Torrey, ENP, and 911 Director of the Grand Traverse Central Dispatch. Jason gave the participants an overview from his side of the phone line on a 911 call. A big part of the discussion was the 20 character description field or location field that could exist in an alley record if it was provisioned. One point that he stressed though was that customers need to be very specific and non-cryptic if they were going to provide that additional location information. Things like Mrs. Smith's room may make sense to people within a building, such as a school, But actually that information means very little, if anything, to the 911 call taker, the 911 dispatcher, and the first responder heading to the scene. Another point that Jason brought out was the fact that if calls rerouted to another 911 center because his center was overloaded, those 20 character descriptions needed to make sense to anybody who got that 911 call. The group was also reminded that the folks behind the scenes in a 911 center are there to help Many times administrators are just not comfortable calling the non-emergency number of a 911 center to discuss their 911 remediation efforts. But to quote Jason, I have a guy here 40 hours a week whose job it is to make sure that database is correct. He's here to help make sure your records are correct as well, unquote. Now I've always been very big on the customer education side of E911. And I have to say, we need to hear from more folks like Jason. In my entire career working with E911 and 911 center coordinators, I have never met one person who didn't overextend themselves to assist an enterprise PBX coordinator solve their specific problem. Public safety's job is to keep the public safe. As a customer, you simply need to reach out and explain your problem. Also attending the meeting was Pat Anderson, who's the E911 coordinator for AT&T. AT&T is one of the two incumbent local exchange carriers that service Michigan, with Frontier handling some of the other areas. Pat explained to the group in very simple terms how the E911 databases actually work and stay current from the carrier perspective. She talked about implementation challenges they faced over the years as the network and enterprises have both evolved. And she also offered her services, as well as volunteered her Frontier counterpart in assisting customers to come up with a remediation plan that worked from all perspectives. We finished off the three-hour session with my presentation, 911, Keeping It Simple, where I discussed the various mechanisms required within an enterprise network to establish the location and routing characteristics of devices on the network, provide on-site situational awareness through screen pops, maps, and emails, We also talked about how to utilize a voice over IP positioning center, or VPC, to provide connectivity for remote workers. Now, for those unable to attend the meeting in person, the session was recorded and we'll be making it available on YouTube within the next week. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Fletch911, where I'll be posting the relevant links within the next couple of days. If you're in Boston this week, be sure to stop by the IAUG Global Education Conference, and be sure to stop by the Avaya booth and say hi. If there's a particular topic that you want to hear covered on the Avaya Connected blog or the E911 Talk podcast, simply drop me a note below. Thanks again. We'll see you next week.
You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency?